Aleksander Laskowski, witam Państwa, zarówno Welcome, Państwa and zgromadzonych z nami tutaj na konferencji prasowej, jak i Fryderyk Chopin Institute Facebook profile and those who watch the transmission on our YouTube transmission, we have also English. Once again, please let me welcome you most cordially, whether watching us online or here in this hall. May I briefly say that this conference is here to invite you and to announce the 18th Friedrich Chopin International Piano Competition and to joy, uh, to, to share the joy that we are supported by so many entities. Please let me start welcomes. May I start from the Minister of Culture and National Heritage and our Deputy Prime Minister, Professor Piotr Gliński. We also have with us Mr. Daniel Obajtek, the President and CEO of PKN Orlen, the sponsor of the Institute. Mr. President, thank you very much for hosting us so generously also today. May I welcome Olgierd Cieślik, the president of Totalizator Sportowy, Jacek Pawlak, president of Toyota Motor Poland, Ms. Katarzyna Piskos, president for corporate affairs at Lot Polish Airlines, Agnieszka Kamińska, the president of the board of Polish Radio, Kalina Cyz, the uh, leading editor of TVP Kultura, Naskabowska, who is the director of Adam Mickiewicz Institute, Mr. Józwik of the Warsaw Municipality, Marta Poślat, Director for Public Affairs in Central and Eastern Europe for Google, and Małgorzata Małaszko-Stasiewicz, Director of Channel 2 Polish Radio, Wojciech Nowak, Director of the Polish uh, National Philharmonic, we don't have Professor Rafał Wisniewski, Director of the National Culture Center, but may I welcome very cordially representatives of that institution, Marek Szczepanowski, uh, Deputy Head of Department at the Polish Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Waldemar Dąbrowski, Director of the Teatr Wielki Polish National Opera, Andrzej Kozłowski, President of Emitel SA, and Jakub Kopczyński, Director for Marketing at Fabryka Cukiernicza Kopernik SA. And last but not least, may I also welcome my bosses, Dr. Artur Szklener, the Director of the Polish Chopin Institute, and Stanisław Leszczyński, Deputy Director and Director's Plenipotentiary for Artistic Affairs. Once again, may I welcome most cordially, and now, it is time for Professor Piotr Gliński, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Culture and National Heritage. Prime Minister, could you please take the floor? All right, everything's ahead of me. Ladies and gentlemen, Chopin is the Polish case, in essence, perhaps the most important Polish matter, the greatest figure and the greatest icon in Polish culture. And culture, as we all know, is the most important. I'm so very glad that today we can inaugurate that conference. Well, this is really the last run to the Chopin competition that will be held in Poland as it is held every five years. It's going to be held this year and that's our opportunity to say that this is something that's very important for all of us, for the entire Polish community but also for the whole world because Chopin is an icon of global culture, world culture, for which reason Poland is bound to do it. Like last year, we honored Mongiuszko, and Mongiuszko is honored every year. In the same way, we are to praise Chopin worldwide and make sure 
that we cherish the heritage of Chopin's music, that we sustain and develop and support that heritage. And that's what we do. This is our highly honorary duty and a very pleasant one indeed. This day is also the time when we can thank, express gratitude to all those thanks to whom Chopin in Poland is so magnificently venerated, appreciated, studied, and thanks to whom his heritage is developed. Through this competition, through the competition we inaugurated recently, a new one for historical instruments, period instruments, but of course the greatest brand is the competition that has been organized in Poland since the 1920s and which stems from a certain reflection on sports competition. That was a reference to the mass culture and how it operates. Professor Zhuravlev had that idea to introduce Chopin into what at the time was modern and developing popular culture the mass culture through competition that is competing, that is rivalry, like the athletes do in the 1920s after Poland became independent, after the First World War, also known as the Great War, sports became something significant, something that became a part of general awareness and that great visionary and organizer of competitions also had that idea to promote culture along the same lines within the space of mass culture. That's how the Chopin competition began. I'd like to say that this competition is our shared work and also our shared responsibility. Of course, the Chopin Institute, the main organizer, is due great gratitude. The, its management works fine, and also all the experts and musical institution backdrop, everyone who's connected to the Polish National Institute, the Friedrich Chopin Institute, you have a great contribution, and it's also your great merit to organize this competition at such a high level. The jury, those who participate in the competition judgments are also eminent figures and they arrive from all over the world. They are representatives of various milieus, circles and environments promoting Friedrich Chopin as culture icon. Important are the sponsors, beginning with the host of this location, largest Polish company, PKN Orlen, has for years sponsored systemically the Polish uh, Friedrich Chopin Institute. It's not only a competition business every five years, but in case of Orlen, but not only, Polish business is permanently, I could say, I could say, I hope, permanently connected to the Institute. Every now and then we boast that there are some purchases of magnificent historical documents or perhaps pianos, instruments that are purchased also thanks to the company. We really set a great store by it and also all the cooperation with other representatives of business who support Polish culture. But please let me tell you the truth. Well, the truth is that the greatest sponsor is the Ministry of Culture and National Heritage. The budget of the competition is 20 million, but adding the contribution of media, who always cooperate with us very closely, very important. Here I'd like to thank the public television and public radio, all the other representatives of the media, Counting all these, the budget must, I believe, be much, much greater. But this involvement of the Ministry of Culture and National Heritage, it's 12 million directly into the competition, but it's 
really 20. It is very important. People of culture know that you cannot represent culture without money, but certainly this is not what is the most important. The most important fact is that the institution lasts. It continues to develop, and it has a foundation for optimistic outlook into the future. Well, I've mentioned money, so now, probably closing, I should say that having browsed through the materials that I received for today, they prove that Chopin as brand is worth 3 billion Polish zloty. And we know that this brand is absolutely priceless. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Minister. We've had sports mentioned and big numbers mentioned as well. Hence, I believe it is the best time for the CEO and President of PKN Orlen, who is the main sponsor of the festival. Mr. Daniel Obajtek, may I invite you to the floor. Mr. Prime Minister, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, of course, Orlen will go on being the sponsor. Chopin is a luxury good here and in the world. Wherever we go, especially last year when I was in Saudi Arabia, our country is very strongly recognized through Chopin. Chopin is magnificent music. It soothes our savage mind, also mine. This is something that shows our culture, that shows this grand culture that we contributed actually to the whole world. We with Chopin do not limit ourselves to Poland only. Chopin is our brand worldwide. And we as Orlen, the company that generates 60% of revenue in other markets outside Poland, for us, this is important as well. Through Chopin, we build the value of our brand. The value of Chopin brand has been mentioned by the Prime Minister. Well, we use it to build the value of our brand through sports, through culture, through art. You do it because brand can be assessed. However, not everything can be translated into funds, beginning with 2015 Orlen increased the its culture expenditure by the factor of six we earn more we invest more into sports and into culture this is our obligation as the champion of polish economy we have our social responsibility corporate social responsibility it motivates us to investing the Chopin competition is one of the world's greatest cultural events around 120 hours of transmitting it all over the world we don't have any better promotion this is one of the best for our country this is one of the best ways of promoting the company that i manage and orlan will always be investing into culture always supporting it not only through orlan there is also the foundation that strongly supports culture we have renovated two pianos of the same brand on which Chopin played and there's also fantastic collaboration with the Institute so we bring all of these together once again thank you very much for this cooperation it is perfect both with the Ministry with the Prime Minister and with the director of the Institute thank you very much for this cooperation may I once again emphasize as the champion of Polish economy, Orlen will always support culture. Thank you. Thank you, um, uh, Mr. President of the Board, and uh, thank you for your nice declarations. And I would like to invite uh, Olgert Cieślik, uh, the CEO of the uh, Polish Lottery Totalizator Sportowy. Prime Minister, ladies and gentlemen, the Totalizator Sportowy Company has uh, support for sports and culture in its DNA and uh, today we are primarily focused on supporting culture and we have been supporting culture for many years. Together with uh, the uh, Frederick Chopin Institute we uh, have been working uh, together for 
many years we have uh, been uh, purchasing uh, the um, purchase of autographs uh, of the uh, Springs uh, songs, uh, but also we were uh, fundraising uh, for uh, the repair of the grand piano that uh, Frederick Chopin used to play. So many of the initiatives that we run have one single purpose. We are here to reinforce um, uh, the uh, foundation for the uh, Polish uh, national identity, which is Polish culture. And this is one of um, uh, the primal uh, focus in our activities. We have uh, been uh, marking millions of slotters every year for the promotion of Polish culture. And uh, one should remember that um, um, one, since uh, its establishment, we have uh, earmarked 2 billion, 600 million slotters for culture. And this is due to our players, our players who play with our company. They are the greatest sponsors of culture in Poland. So we play for culture. And undoubtedly, this uh, motto is very much needed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir, the Chopin International Competition is a global event, and therefore we are promoting this event all over the world, uh, uh, also by means of uh, different presentations, uh, such as the uh, recital. And by the way, at the end of the today's meeting, we are going uh, to enjoy a recital. But uh, um, usually during our presentations, we show a brief video presentation about the history of the competition. And uh, wherever we are, is it Miami, Moscow, London, or anywhere else, we always uh, show some presentation. And uh, again, we would like to share with you some of the reminiscence of the past. <laughs> Chopina odbywa się w Warszawie od niemal 100 lat. To jedna z najstarszych i najważniejszych imprez tego rodzaju na świecie. Jest to konkurs wyjątkowy, poświęcony całości twórczości jednego kompozytora, największego polskiego kompozytora, Fryderyka Chopina. Co pięć lat pianiści z całego świata przybywają do Warszawy, by walczyć o tytuł najlepszego Chopinisty swojego pokolenia. Oczywiście udział w konkursie to niesamowita próba nerwów. Co jednak znacznie ważniejsze, to możliwość zaprezentowania swojego talentu milionom widzów z całego świata. Wreszcie wspaniała okazja, by rozpocząć oszałamiającą karierę o globalnym rozmachu. Polska odzyskała niepodległość w 1918 roku. Wkrótce potem, w roku 1925, z inicjatywy pianisty i pedagoga Jerzego Żurawlewa narodziła się idea zorganizowania międzynarodowego konkursu szopenowskiego. Pierwsza edycja konkursu odbyła się w 1927 roku w pięknym gmachu warszawskiej filharmonii. Do udziału w konkursowych szrankach stanęło 26 pianistów z ośmiu krajów. Wśród nich był reprezentujący Związek Radziecki 20-letni Dymitr Szostakowicz, który zresztą żadnej nagrody nie zdobył. Zwyciężył inny pianista radziecki, Lew Oborin, zaś miejsce drugie i trzecie przypadły reprezentantom Polski, Stanisławowi Szpinalskiemu i Róży Etkin Moszkowskiej. Uczestnicy konkursu ćwiczyli w prywatnych domach zamożnych warszawiaków. Jako, że organizatorzy pierwszej edycji konkursu nie pomyśleli o tym, by zapewnić odpowiednią liczbę sal do ćwiczenia. To niedopatrzenie nigdy się już nie powtórzyło. Druga edycja konkursu odbyła się w 1932 roku. Jednym z jurorów był wielki polski kompozytor Karol Szymanowski, zaś honorowym gościem jury specjalnie na tę okazję przybyły z Francji Maurice Ravel. W drugim konkursie zwyciężył rosyjski emigrant z Paryża Aleksander Uniński. Ostatnia przedwojenna edycja konkursu Chopinowskiego odbyła się w 1937 roku. Wówczas po raz pierwszy wśród uczestników pojawili się, dobrze dziś znani ze swojej miłości do Fryderyka Chopina, Japończycy, którzy wzbudzili sensację. Pierwszą nagrodę otrzymał Jakow Zak ze Związku Radzieckiego. Polski pianista Witold Małcurzyński zajął trzecie miejsce. Dla niego szczęśliwe konkurs okazał się bowiem początkiem jego wspaniałej międzynarodowej kariery. Druga wojna światowa spowodowała długą, dwunastoletnią przerwę pomiędzy konkursami. 
Wskutek działań wojennych Warszawa została niemal całkowicie zburzona. Zniszczony został budynek warszawskiej filharmonii. Zginęło bądź wyemigrowało wielu polskich pianistów i pedagogów. Pierwszy powojenny konkurs odbył się w roku 1949, kiedy cały świat obchodził stulecie śmierci Fryderyka Chopina. Przesłuchania czwartego konkursu odbyły się w popularnym Teatrze Roma, który ocalał z wojennej pożogi. Pierwszą nagrodę ex -equo otrzymały Halina Czerny-Stefańska z Polski i Bella Dawidowicz z ZSRR. W roku 1955 zainaugurowana została nowa siedziba Filharmonii Narodowej, którą zbudowano w miejsce tej zburzonej podczas wojny. Piąta edycja konkursu, podobnie jak wszystkie kolejne, odbyła się właśnie tam. Zwyciężył polski pianista Adam Harasiewicz. Drugie miejsce zajął Władimir Aszkenazy z ZSRR. Trzecie Chińczyk Hu Song. Konkurs w 1955 roku był nie tylko wielkim wydarzeniem artystycznym, ale i towarzyskim. Przesłuchaniom przysłuchiwała się między innymi kochająca muzykę królowa Belgii Elżbieta, której towarzyszył Jarosław Iwaszkiewicz. Iwaszkiewicz wspominał potem. Jakież dziwne trzy tygodnie. Tygodnie z bajki Andersena. Trzy tygodnie muzyki. Muzyki cały czas cudownej albo takiej, jaka mi się wydawała cudowna. Upajanie się po prostu geniuszem Chopina, oglądanym z coraz to nowych punktów widzenia, błyszczącym coraz innym blaskiem tęczy. I ci genialni chłopcy, Harasiewicz, Pudsong, Tamas Basary, co za urok młodości, upajanie się młodością. I na tym tle wizyta starej, samotnej, uroczej kobiety, która przez przypadek jest także królową. Szósta edycja konkursu odbyła się w roku 1960, w roku Chopina zorganizowanym pod patronatem UNESCO z okazji 150. rocznicy urodzin kompozytora. Tego roku jury było najliczniejsze w historii. W jego skład weszło aż 36 osób, w tym Nadia Boulanger i Witold Małcurzyński, a także Artur Rubinstein jako członek honorowy. Szósty konkurs okazał się szczęśliwy dla Włoch. Zwyciężył bardzo młody, zaledwie 18-letni Maurizio Pollini. Konkurs Chopinowski zakończony. Jury zakończyło swe prace. Werdykt wydany. Pierwsza nagroda, osiemnastoletni Maurizio Pollini. Jego interpretacja muzyki szopenowskiej budziła zgodny podziw już od pierwszego etapu. Po raz pierwszy pianista włoski zdobył tę trudną i zaszczytną nagrodę. Kolejna, siódma edycja konkursu w 1965 roku miała nietypowy początek, bowiem na inaugurację wykonane zostały dzieła polskich kompozytorów współczesnych Kazimierza Serockiego, Witolda Szalonka, Tadeusza Berda, a także Karola Szymanowskiego. Po raz trzeci w historii konkursu zatriumfowała kobieta pochodząca z Argentyny Marta Archericz, która o mały włos nie wypadła z konkursu, próbowała bowiem uciec z filharmonii tuż przed swoim pierwszym występem. Pierwsza nagroda Marta Argericz z Argentyny. Ona także dostała nagrodę Polskiego Radia za najlepsze wykonanie Mazurków i za walca Azdur. Nieprzytomna ze szczęścia i trudno się dziwić. W ósmej edycji konkursu w roku 1970 zwyciężył Garik Olson z USA. Drugą nagrodę otrzymała Mitsuko Uchida z Japonii. Trzecią Polak Piotr Paleczny. W 1975 roku polska publiczność tłumnie przychodziła kibicować reprezentantowi Polski, którym był Christian Zimmerman. Publiczność nie zawiodła się. Zimmerman na dziewiątym konkursie zdobył pierwsze miejsce i niemal wszystkie nagrody dodatkowe. Kolejny konkurs odbywał się w 1980 roku w atmosferze wzmożonego napięcia politycznego. W Polsce był to czas solidarności i wielkich nadziei na upadek komunizmu. W zmaganiach konkursowych ostatecznie zwyciężył Dang Tai Son z Wietnamu, który podczas finału konkursu po raz pierwszy w życiu wystąpił z orkiestrą symfoniczną. Dang Tai Son otrzymał też ex z Ewą Pobłocką, nagrodę za najlepsze wykonanie Mazurków oraz ex z Tatianą Szebanową, nagrody za najlepsze wykonanie Poloneza oraz koncertu. 
Wielki skandal wywołał fakt, że do finału konkursu nie został dopuszczony Iwo Pogorelicz. Na znak protestu Marta Archericz opuściła jury. W roku 1985 na 11 konkursie zwyciężył Stanisław Bunin z ZSRR. W 1990 na 12 konkursie nie przyznano pierwszej nagrody. Drugą otrzymał Kevin Kenner z USA. Konkurs odwiedziły aż dwie koronowane głowy, królowa hiszpańska Sofia i Fabiola, królowa Belgii. W roku 1995 ponownie ku wielkiemu rozczarowaniu publiczności i uczestników konkursu nie przyznano pierwszej nagrody. Drugą nagrodę egzekwo otrzymali Filip Żuziano z Francji i Aleksiej Sultanow z Rosji. Jury 13. Międzynarodowego Konkursu Pianistycznego imienia Fryderyka Chopina zdecydowało nie przyznać pierwszej nagrody. Przyznać dwie drugie nagrody dla Aleksiej Sultanow. W 14. edycji konkursu w roku 2000 zwyciężył Chińczyk Yun Di Li, który z dnia na dzień stał się bohaterem narodowym w swojej ojczyźnie. Pięć lat później bohaterem w swojej ojczyźnie został polski pianista Rafał Blechacz. On też, podobnie jak niegdyś Christian Zimmerman, otrzymał niemal wszystkie nagrody specjalne. Rafał Blechacz urodził się w Nakle nad Notecią. Studiował zaś w Akademii Muzycznej imienia Feliksa Nowowiejskiego w Bydgoszczy u profesor Katarzyny Popowej Zydroń. Pierwszą nagrodę otrzymuje numer 5, number 5, Rafał Blechacz. First prize. Rafał Blechacz, Polen. Szesnasta edycja konkursu odbyła się w roku 2010, kiedy cały świat świętował dwusetną rocznicę urodzin Fryderyka Chopina. Była to pierwsza edycja konkursu organizowana przez Narodowy Instytut Fryderyka Chopina. Młodzi pianiści natchnienia szukali między innymi w nowo otwartym Muzeum Fryderyka Chopina i pięknym parku otaczającym Dom Urodzenia Fryderyka Chopina w Żelazowej Woli. Laureaci rocznicowego konkursu to Daniel Trifonow, Ingolf Wunder, Lukas Geniuszas i zdobywczyni złotego medalu Julianna Awdziejewa. Nasta edycja konkursu w roku 2015 była najbardziej medialną ze wszystkich. Rekordowa liczba widzów śledziła zmagania konkursowe w telewizji, radiu i przede wszystkim w internecie. Zwyciężył Koreańczyk Son Jin Cho. Międzynarodowy konkurs pianistyczny imienia Fryderyka Chopina w Warszawie należy nie tylko do najważniejszych wydarzeń tego typu na świecie, ale w ogóle do najważniejszych wydarzeń kulturalnych o globalnym zasięgu. Gdy w Warszawie trwa konkurs, oczy całego świata zwrócone są na Polskę. Każda edycja konkursu Chopinowskiego to wielkie święto miłośników muzyki. Każda edycja to szansa na odkrycie nowych, wspaniałych artystów. To wielkie przeżycia, które w sercu i pamięci pozostają na zawsze.
Co przyniesie nam 18. edycja konkursu? Przekonamy się niebawem, już w październiku tego roku. Słów, to kilka few words about the history of this competition and incidentally the Mr. President has just received an urgent call and so he had to leave the conference but let us move on with our media events so few we've spoken about history so let's talk about today and the nearest future Dr. Arthur Schlener the director of the in, uh, Frederick um, uh, Chopin Institute. Prime Minister, ladies and gentlemen, after this um, video material and um, after those words about history, we do remember those events, although from many different perspectives. We were quite young, or even children. But let us speak about um, today, the present day, and let us build this uh, bridge. If we look at the first uh, Chopin uh, competition, and if we look at um, this idea of Jerzy Żurawlew uh, that Mr. Prime Minister spoke about, and uh, there are three elements that are very much contemporary. Um, first, uh, this is uh, the combination of uh, arts with uh, sports, uh, something that was not that obvious in the past, uh, but that was bullseye. It was a very good d decision. And today, uh, we have uh, to see that um, Chopin's music needs uh, to be promoted. Those days, Chopin's music was associated uh, with uh, um, high life, and it was not uh, uh, really um, associated uh, with uh, regular uh, cultural education. It was Bach, Mozart, Beethoven. Those were uh, the masters of classical music, and Chopin was considered to be a, a composer with rather um, outstanding mannerisms. However, we are looking at the sources. We need to see it's not only the reinterpretation of music that is so important, it's important to uh, provide uh, for the interpretation that is the closest possible interpretation to the times of Chopin. And this is a very contemporary approach. If we look at the statistics, uh, uh, just a second, please bear with me. I need to uh, master the control of those slides. So if we look at the statistics, please have a look. This is the number of applications and chronologically and already in the second competition we see 200 applications so this is uh, quite a lot and uh, that shows uh, the magnitude of success of the first competition merely 26 people applied for uh, the first one but already 200 people applied for the second competition therefore if uh, we are building this bridge between the past and today we need to take into consideration the tradition, but also modern tradition. And let us uh, try to see how we are going uh, to deal with the uh, tradition in our time. So the 17th Frederick Chopin International Piano Competition was um, the time when we used new media. The new media meant that the um, Chopin International Piano Competition is um, the only in Poland and um, one of the few in the world that is devoted to high art, uh, but actually it is as popular as uh, Mark's culture. And this, the next element that is the motto that uh, we started using uh, due to our technical partner, that, that is Google. And um, as um, they were announcing the results of the competition 2015 in Asia, the Google search for the word shopping was more popular than shopping. So I think that this is quite an interesting token and it's uh, quite an interesting sign that shows the value of Chopin. Uh, so the revolution in social media meant that uh, today we have uh, at least uh, a quarter of a million people who follow us on an everyday basis. Those are the users uh, uh, who, that use registered devices and we reach out to them every single day. And also comments. We see that this is bi-directional uh, um, um, participation in the competition, something that was not possible in the past. And um, also the Deutsche Grammophon, the largest records uh, recording company in the world, within three months sold um, uh, thousands of records uh, with uh, the prize uh, winners, which is quite an astonishing result. And uh, in 
the 18th uh, Frederick Chopin International Piano Competition for us from the organizer's point of view has already begun. So as you, ca you can see here the uh, schedule of events uh, and right now we are between the um, um, evaluations given by the Quali Qualification Commission and uh, by the preliminary round. and. Um, and here we see, uh, we see the schedule and finally the prize winners concerts at the end. And this is the structure that is the pyramidal structure of the participants of uh, this uh, competition. We have 502 applicants, which is record high. The qualifi qualified committee has um, accepted to the preliminary round 164 persons, of which that um, 80 persons will play in the first stage. Uh, final is 10, uh, 10 uh, persons, and uh, finally we'll see the winner. And this is the qualifying committee. You see the composition of it. That is uh, Professor Popova Zidron, the chair of uh, uh, the committee, Lech Dujek, Janusz Olenisz, Piotr Pawelczny, and Wojciech Świtała. 200 um, and 50 hours of music that were forwarded on DVD discs. And this is the task faced by the committee. As far as the participants of the preliminary round is concerned, that is the structure of the world. So 58% of persons are from Asia, 32% from Europe, nine from North America, which is a very good result. And one percent of participants from Australia. And let's move on. The next slide, and that is the preliminary round jury. In the preliminary round jury, as you can see, we have eight person, eight out of twelve. Those are. Um, the people who are going to take part in the uh, works of the competition jury, which is quite a high number of jury members. So that is uh, to provide for the repeatability of the evaluation of results. They are presented in the alphabetical order. Um, and those are the professors in alphabetical order. Those have been the names of the members of um, the preliminary round jury. And this is the slide that is uh, quite uh, a pertinent one. That is, how are we dealing with the, uh, from the crisis management point of view, and how we're going to uh, deal with the schedule of this competition in the context of the coronavirus. And together with, the Prime, uh, with Deputy Prime Minister Glinski, we decided not to change the schedule. The circumstances that uh, may force us to change the schedule is once we find out that most of the participants would not actually uh, come uh, to the preliminary round, and then we would shift the preliminary round to uh, September. However, sh uh, if that does not happen, then the uh, preliminary round perhaps will take uh, might take place without the uh, presence of the public but we are ready from the crisis management point of view as well and um, that is the uh, competition jury and um, the October jury is um, uh, in its composition very much uh, like um, uh, the jury in 2015 as far as the regulations are concerned. So this is the composition again I will name uh, the members of the final jury. Uh, this is uh, Professor Popova Sidrin, who is the chair, and Mitra Alexei, uh, Marta Arkerich, uh, Sa Shan, uh, Tosan Tang, um, Akiko Ebi, Emerson Teire, uh, Filipo Ciziano, uh, Nelem Kerner, Adam Krasimovich, Krzysztof Japolski, Kevin Kenner, Janusz Olejniczak, uh, Piotr Palecny, Eva Popolska, John Rink, uh, Wojciech Świtawa, and uh, Diana Iliop. Uh, uh, please note that just like in 2015, as many as uh, 13 members of the jury are the prize winners in the previous competitions, and five of them were um, laureates, um, and all of them are artists. So this is a highly com uh, competent and legendary composition of the jury. As far as the prizes are concerned, of course, uh, those uh, the, the financial rewards are not the most important ones. And apart from the financial rewards, we also have some special prizes. Those are pre highly prestigious uh, prizes for the uh, best performances of, of uh, mazurkas, uh, polonaise, and concerts, and the sonatas. And um, uh, the next slide shows uh, the most uh, important element as far as prizes are concerned. This is the International Global Tour uh, 
of the prize winner and of the uh, uh, laureates and of the winners. So, so this is a highly prestigious tour uh, with an immense scope. And uh, as um, until February 2021, the winner shall be on concert tour. And uh, as you can see, the winner is going to visit all of the continents uh, and is going to perform in the most prestigious uh, concert halls all over the world. And this is the final slide that shows um, the accessibility of this competition. As far as the concert hall is concerned, um, there we will provide for the most important uh, possibility of being living through music and arts. And despite uh, um, uh, uh, d despite uh, the uh, possible epidemiological uh, crisis, uh, we will provide for crisis management, of course, uh, but um, we will uh, also broadcast in 4K uh, quality. We will also provide for virtual reality. We will be present uh, in social media. We will be present uh, in media platforms, and we will be present on smartphones. So many different forms of um, uh, content um, uh, will be available. Also, we launched uh, the new uh, shop in 2020. 20.bl web page and there we see uh, the uh, full list of the participants of the preliminary round. What is new is the so-called uh, Music Lava Zone. And the Music Lover Zone is a new initiative that is going to be run both in Poland and abroad by the um, the Polish TV, by the National Center of Culture, and uh, and by the other Mitskevich Institute abroad, and of course uh, by the main organizer of the competition, that is the Frederick Chopin Institute. So thank you very much for your uh, kind uh, cooperation with us. And to, today we have been uh, speaking about public-private partnership, and undoubtedly without public and private partnership many things would have not been um, um, possible, uh, but the main competition is going to take place in the Philharmonic Hall and also the concert is going to take place in um, uh, the Wielki Teatr. So I would like to thank both directors because it is due to this cooperation that we can celebrate this great holiday of Chopin. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Director. The words new media or the notion of new media was very strongly mentioned, but Chopin competition is also long-term partnership competition with the national media. May I invite Agnieszka Kamińska, the president of the board of Polish Radio. Distinguished Prime Minister, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I believe that using the opportunity of this meeting today, it is worthwhile to emphasize that the Polish radio, which I have the honor to represent, and the international competition are almost of the same age. Polish radio was set up in 1925, so we are now celebrating 95th anniversary of operation and its activity for the sake of the Polish people. And the Polish first Chopin competition was organized by Professor Żuravlew in 1927, as we heard a moment ago and saw it on the film. That first competition, already back then in 1927, it was on air of the Polish radio. It was broadcast by the radio, it was only developing and was not as easily available. At that time already the transmissions were very impatiently awaited on by the audiences and followed, followed with plenty of emotions. From the very first days, 1927, the Polish radio has been the founder of the prize for the best mazurkas. We had Henryk Stompka winning it. He was the first in 1927. Halina Czernistefańska later. Marta Arheric. Garrick Olson, Christian Zimmermann and Rafał Blechert. They have been the winners. And we've heard also of that prize a moment ago. Even though modern technologies are developing, preferences of our audiences are changing and there are also many other factors that change the competition and its radio broadcasts are the source of plenty of positive emotions and a perfect tool for the promotion of so-called high culture 
the high culture that has to compete for its aficionados against the so-called mass culture anywhere in the world where you go. Several years ago, it's a very nice thing when one of the papers wrote that uh, the following stages of the competition are followed on the radio like a series, like a film series. Polish radio is very actively involved in the cooperation with the now already 18th Chopin competition. You'll find detailed descriptions in press materials. May I only emphasize that the transmissions, broadcasts, and then retransmissions, plus the daily competition services will be available in all the main Polish radio programs. You'll hear us on Channel 1, Channel 2, Channel 3, Radio Chopin, and also in Polish and in English on the website of the Polish radio. It's not only concerts, these are comments from the experts, interviews with participants, reviews, also from journalists. We will have presentations of Chopin records, and we will reiterate the greatest archival recordings with Polish and foreign maestros, interviews with winners, also with audiences, and plenty of current information in information services, because that is also of very, very big significance. Can we, as listeners, have magnificent artistic experience during the competition? Let's have the magnificent emotions from also our youngest artists. That's something that I wish to all of us from all my heart. And may the best win. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. May I now ask Kalina Cyz, the director of TVP Kultura, on behalf of Polish TV. Distinguished Prime Minister, dear ladies and gentlemen, Jarosław Iwaszkiewicz has already been quoted here today in uh, the preface to the first edition of my Chopin, he wrote, this is the result of the love for the art of Chopin and his personality. The eagerness to share that overpowering feeling. At TVP Cultura, we can only repeat these words. A TV production of the competition results from the love for the art of Chopin and the eagerness to share this love with the people who watch us. In the Philharmonic Hall, we can have 1,072 people, so that's the maximum audience. Thanks to the signal, this is amplified 1,000 times. We hold the competition every five years, and every time the TV recording is the state-of-the-art technical recording. This is how Ivashkevich closes his book. This music lives with us and fights with us. It is the bridge between Poland and the world. It is the decoration and the value of that world. It explains this world to us and like any great art. And the art of Chopin is our greatest art. If Ivashkiewicz was right, and I want to believe he was, as TVP Kultura and as the Polish television, we want to become for a moment a part of that beauty of that world of beauty and values, namely the music of Chopin performed by the most talented young people from all over the world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. As it is known, the Chopin competition is one of the symbols of the capital city of Warsaw, so may I now invite uh, Mr. Juzvik, director of the uh, Bureau of Culture of the city of Warsaw. Distinguished Prime Minister, ladies and gentlemen, yes, Chopin is the p thing of the whole Poland, but also a symbol of Warsaw, so it is our great pleasure to be co-organizers 
of this competition. The city of Warsaw supports the competition financially, but also materially, providing, for example, access to the municipal advertising. The city is the founder of the sixth prize, but also for additional honorable special mentions. In Warsaw, we have a range of initiatives that commemorate Friedrich Chopin, May I invite you already now to a series of Chopin concerts in the Royal Baths from mid-May to the end of September. And to all of you and myself, may I wish the fantastic emotions we've seen, what they looked like in the past, in the history. All the best and thank you for the time. Thank you. Director Schklener mentioned the zones. Well, there are some names, music lovers, audience, or fan zones. In English, it's easier. You just call it Chopin Competition Fan Zone. And the Chopin Competition Fan Zones abroad will be discussed by Barbara Skabowska, who is the acting director of the Mickiewicz Institute. Distinguished Prime Minister, ladies and gentlemen, Gentlemen, the Mickiewicz Institute is aware of the power, of the international power of the Chopin brand and often uses it for promoting Polish culture abroad. For years, we have supported the competition, inviting foreign journalists to uh, work on the competition, to report on it. And this year, thanks to a special fund we will work in various time zones where we are opening special Chopin competition fan zones that is Wuhata. Together with Polish TV and Chopin Institute in eight cities we're going to develop those zones New York, London, Paris, Budapest, Moscow, Jerusalem, Seoul and Tokyo. People of these cities will participate nearly live in the Warsaw competition whether this is broadcast live or there will be a certain delay in time, we're negotiating that. Please imagine that in Japan, our partner wants to organize a night watch. Even though there is a nine-hour shift, the Japanese would like to come and experience those sports emotions and be fans and support and cheer for uh, them. It's not going to be throughout the uh, competition, only the finals and then the concert by the winners. When there are no broadcasts, together with the Polish uh, TV, we're going to uh, present Chopin films and theatre productions. We're also going to run workshops, discussions with pianists who participated. And I hope that no virus is going to break our strides. And by 18th of October, we will have finished all those uh, steps, all those actions. Thank you very much. And we very very warmly encourage you to enter Chopin competition fan zones. Those who haven't managed to buy tickets, there are no more tickets available in uh, the box offices because they all sold in three hours. May I now ask Katarzyna Piskosz, who is the president for corporate affairs of Lot Polish Airlines. Distinguished Prime Minister, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the uh, role of the official carrier is very natural for LOT because it ideally is a part of the mission of promoting Polish culture internationally. We are proud to be the airline of Chopin's country. Chopin's music is the quintessence of Polishness, energy, a sense of freedom and perfection of the workshop of the experience. Norwit famously said, and Poland was within it. The more glad are we that in cooperation with the Friedrich Chopin uh, Institute, we will have an opportunity to perform Chopin music to our uh, passengers on long haul flights from North America and Asia. Now may I only invite you to this grand musical feast. May we invite all the music lovers also to board our planes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now it's time for Jacek Pawlak, the president of Toyota Motor Polska.
Distinguished Prime Minister, ladies and gentlemen, Alexis Polska is so happy and honored to be able to support this project, an extraordinary one. Our cooperation has continued since 2009, and every year we support the uh, Chopin and his Europe Festival, and every five years this extraordinary Friedrich Chopin International Piano Competition. We said that Chopin is the most precious Polish brand in the world, but I believe that it is also the most precious brand in Japan. The Japanese simply adore Chopin, they love Chopin, and that is a country of great musical sensitivity where plenty of time and effort is devoted to the education of children. I don't know if you know, but to this day in Japan, they publish regularly a magazine entitled Chopin. In Japan, they say that in the th each third family, there is a piano or a grand piano. And the Japanese who love that music are sad to play and sing most of Chopin's work because they love singing. What brings together Lexus as a brand and Chopin's music? The Japanese themselves say that this is this refined, sublime elegance and that Japanese strive for perfection, incessant and continuing. When we ask artists who are driven in Lexus what they appreciate in those is low emissions, comfort, and exquisite silence. I am convinced that if Frédéric Chopin lived in our days, he'd be driving a Lexus. Thank you very much. No, I believe that if he were a Japanese, he would be singing Chopin. If we had a musical meeting, we are now arriving at the Coda. We've got uh, Ms. Poshlat. Marta Poshlat is Director for Public Affairs at Google for Central Eastern Europe. Thank you very much uh, for invitation to the conference. It's a great pleasure that it is the second time when we can support the Chopin competition. Through YouTube, the live broadcast will be available all over the world. In whichever corner of the world you are, you will be able to watch it on high-quality devices. That broadcast would be just like in the concert hall. This year's competition also coincides with an anniversary that is very important for us, namely 15th birthday of YouTube. Every month there are 2 billion users on YouTube, and during each minute of our meeting here today, the service receives 500 hours of new material. Classical music holds a permanent place here. We help the best orchestras and philharmonic halls promote themselves, including the Warsaw Philharmonic, that's the Polish National Philharmonic. Their channel is highly popular. We've already had the pleasure of working five years ago with the Friedrich Chopin Institute then, you could follow all the uh, broadcasts live because there was live streaming and you could also play it back. Most listeners came from Japan, South Korea and the US. Altogether, 1.5 hours of performances were watched. If we thought about it as non-stop watching, that would make 171 years. We also remember the words of the winner of the decision who said, I don't remember how I played. I had to watch it again on YouTube. As it has been mentioned, the uh, Chopin Competition Channel is the place for exchanging comments and opinions. They are of exquisite culture, and this is a proof that music assuages the savage mind. Today we invite you to the uh, Frédéric Chopin Competition Channel, and, well, we all ears for the magnificent concerts to come. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, if... Uh, there is anyone 
uh, yet who doesn't have that subscription, please subscribe. Uh, after a brief break, uh, Adam Kuldinski is going to perform with a recital, but uh, I would like to invite all of the speakers to join me here on the stage, and we will take a family photo. And uh, if we may prepare the stage, please, uh, um, Deputy Prime Minister, please join us on the stage.
pierwszy. Dwie etiudy z opusu. Five, that is uh, opus 10 and uh, number 11, and then the ballad in F minor, opus 52. So it is with great pleasure that I would like to announce the pianist who is going thus uh, to, in a way, begin a competition. So let us listen to the recital by Adam. Kaldunski. Enjoy.